Hello, friends. Hey, today we're going to talk about Proposition 33 coming on the California ballot. Can you believe it? They're bringing up basically trying to strip the rent control that's in place and replace it with something that doesn't exist. Well, yeah, they want to have broad power over what happens, and it is detrimental to the everyone in the state, um, property providers and for tenants. So bottom line, vote no on 33. <laughs> no, but, 30 but, we'll, <laughs> but we'll give you some information here. We have the California Association of Realtors has come against Prop 33. They've donated over $25 million to see it defeated. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. We feel like they're right on this one. That's right. So Proposition 33 would overturn more than 100 state housing laws and weakens the strongest statewide rent stability laws in the nation. So right now, the jurisdictions, there is state rent control rules, but each area kind of has their own power to do more or less, not less, more than what the state law provides. Um, but this would give broad brush that the government, local government authorities could basically do what, whatever they want. And Prop 33 grants local governments broad authority to supersede California's historic statewide renter and unjust eviction protections. It authorizes permanent price controls, even on single-family homes and condominiums, which are currently excluded from all rent control laws. Um, they are going to add those in. And Prop 33 enables local governments the ability to potentially hinder affordable housing developments. Wow, right. that's a mouthful, huh? Right, because why would you want to come to California and build af affordable housing units when you're going to be capped on what you can charge on the rent, even on affordability? So, I mean, you know, nobody builds homes for free. That's right. <laughs> very expensive to build here, very expensive to rent here. Mm -hmm. This makes it worse. <laughs> Much worse. Um, and it will just drive the prices up. I mean, all of this is, bottom line, drives the rent prices up, not down. Um, if there's less properties, what happens? Price goes up, right? Uh, what it doesn't do. So don't believe the ads. This is what it doesn't do, but this is what the ads you're going to see on TV tell you it does do. It does not provide funding for affordable housing or a requirement that it be built. It does not do provide specific provisions to reduce rent. And I, that's kind of a tricky deal. I mean, the government's going to tell you to reduce rent. Well, we would have to reduce home prices, and we'd have to reduce a lot of things for homeowners to reduce rent. It does not provide specific protection for renters, seniors, or veterans. So don't believe that when you see it. So it eliminates the basic homeowners' rights and protections, terminates the current prohibition on rent control, gives local politicians and unelected rent boards. This is where, you know, right now you have to get the voters uh, to make changes here. And this gives them unelected rent boards massive new power to establish rent control on single family, um, including complete control over rent prices and regulations. Well, what happened to personal property rights? Um, limits a homeowner's control of their own property, reducing property rights and home values. Well, there you go. There you I knew it. the next one right in my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Rent control expansion allows politicians and unelected government boards to have reign in imposing and expanding extreme forms of rent control. Mm -hmm. These boards could impose fees and requirements on homeowners without public vote, thereby rising housing costs. Yep. Um, so it will worsen the housing crisis in California, like we said. So it will discourage and even stop new construction. Um, like California needs three and a half million more homes by the end of 2025, but Prop 33 does nothing to build new housing and it will reduce new construction because like we said, who's going to want to come here and build you units that we desperately need? That's right. Or if they're already here and they're building units, it's sure going to discourage them from continuing to build. That's right. Economic impact is bad for tenants and bad for homeowners. Mm -hmm. So if it's bad for both, it can't be good for anybody other than expanded rent controls from people you didn't vote for. That's right. Um, one of the, you know, there's so many, many stories that we've read, but we'll just, you know, use our own as an example. You know, we have single family rental homes um, that are currently excluded from the program but you know right now that if a tenant moves out of course mom and pop uh, landlords like us you know we generally have lower than market rents we want to keep our tenants for a long time when we have good tenants we don't raise the rents all the time and raise them up to market 
And so we are generally below market on all of the rentals we've had. And so what this does is it also would eliminate our ability if we have a tenant move out, we wouldn't be able to raise that low below market rent that we have charged to a tenant for years to a market rent. So it would, it would mean that you can't even come to market. So it eliminates your ability to do maintenance and keep the property in good shape um, and make it somewhere that a tenant even wants to live that's safe and ready to live in. That's right. So if you do that to property owners, ultimately they'll end up selling the property. Probably somebody else would move into it and wouldn't be a rental property anymore. So it reduces the overall inventory. And in fact, in Ventura County, they say that 70% of the rents right now are below market value just because the property providers are doing exactly that. They're keeping their rents artificially low to keep the tenants in. That's the difference. I mean, more rent increases because of property right restrictions as far as if you can't do that, it forces us to even raise rents when we don't want to, but if somebody were to move out, we couldn't go to market. We have to always stay near market. Increases the cost for everybody involved. That's right. So it is not a good deal for anybody, whether you're a homeowner or a landlord or a potential landlord or you're the tenant, vote no on 33. I don't know how they keep slipping these in, but they keep doing it and we're going to stand and fight. Vote no on 33, GaryandLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Thank you.